Well, today it was made official. The Seattle Mariners are officially eliminated from playoff contention with the Royals and the Tigers both winning their matchups today. There's no scenario in which the Mariners can now make it into the playoffs. This was a day that Mariners fans expected to be coming for a while now after watching this team just absolutely implode halfway through the season. June 18th, they had a 91.7% chance of making the playoffs. By August 22nd, they had a 10.9% chance of making the playoffs per fan graphs. The Seattle Mariners today, became the first team since the 1995 Angels to hold a 10-game lead in their division and still miss the playoffs. In 2021, the Mariners were eliminated in Game 162. In 2022, the Mariners broke their 21-year playoff drought. They made it to the playoffs and then got swept in the ALDS by the Houston Astros. 2023, they got eliminated in Game 161. This season, they got eliminated in Game 160. And Mariners fans are beyond frustrated. They're heading to another level of frustration and completely understandable. This doesn't even really make any sense. The Mariners just squandered this season. The best starting rotation that the franchise has ever seen. I made a video before the season started stating how this would be the case, and this is exactly how it's played out. The Mariners via Fangraphs are projected to have three guys in their starting rotation finish top 10 in Cy Young voting. They're the only team to have three out of their rotation projected to finish top 10, with Logan Gilbert, George Kirby, and Bryce Miller projected to finish 6th through 8th. Seattle's overall pitching staff is tied for the major league lead in ERA with a 3.51, while leading the majors in opponent batting average at a 219, whip at a 1.08, strikeout to walk ratio at a 3.81, fewest walks per 9 innings at a 2.32, fewest hits per 9 innings with a 7.4, opponent on base percentage with a 276, opponent OPS with a 652, and quality starts with 91 quality starts this season. Seattle's starting rotation leads all of baseball in ERA with a 3.42, opponent batting average with a 224, whip with a 1.03, strikeout to walk ratio with a 4.83, fewest walks per nine innings with a 1.75, fewest hits per nine innings with 7.55, an opponent OPS with a 645. How does this make any sense? They, they missed out on the playoffs when this is their starting pitching, especially with how rare it is to have quality pitching across your roster in general. This type of starting rotation and pitching staff in general does not happen every day, does not happen every year. You might not see anything like this again in Mariners history. We're talking Brian Wu, their number five guy on paper, has a 3.02 ERA on the year with a 0.9 whip, their number five guy. And four out of those five guys are on their rookie contract or in their first year of arbitration. On top of the pitching, Cal Raleigh is likely to win this silver slugger and the gold glove for catcher in the American League. Cal leads all MLB catchers with a career high 31 home runs. He's set to become the first catcher to lead the majors in homers in three plus consecutive seasons since Mike Piazza did it in four consecutive seasons back in 99 through 2002. Cal leads the majors in catcher caught stealing with 26. And after leading the majors in catcher caught stealing last year, Cal Raleigh could become the third catcher to lead the majors in catcher caught stealing in consecutive seasons. And I believe the stat is that he could become the first catcher in history to lead the league in back-to-back -back seasons in catcher caught stealing and home runs. And a sad part about this is that it seems that they figured out what was wrong and they've fixed the issues, but it's too little too late. Since they fired Scott Service and fired Jared DeHart, the hitting coach, since Edgar Martinez was hired as the Mariners hitting coach on August 23rd, just since the day that he was hired, the Mariners have been the third most valuable offense in all of baseball per fan graphs. And over the last 19 games since September 4th, Seattle's offense leads the majors in batting average with a 285 on base percentage with a 367 and weighted runs created plus with a 140. They also rank second in OPS with an 820, fourth in slugging with a 453, second in hits with 189, and third in runs with 103 over that span. The Mariners offense has recorded 10 plus hits in 11 of 19 games and four plus walks in 14 of 19 games while striking out 10 plus times in only six of those 19 contests. It is purely because of this coaching change that the Seattle Mariners in 2024 will not set a MLB record in total strikeouts for a team in a season. The Twins from last year set the high mark in strikeouts in a season with 1654. As of today, the Mariners are currently tied with their strikeout total from last year with 1603. 
And with three games remaining, I assume they won't strike out more than 51 times over these next three games. Justin Turner currently has the longest active on base streak in the majors with 20 straight games of getting on base. And Julio has completely turned things around over the last month. Over his last 25 games, Julio is batting 366 with 24 runs, five doubles, eight homers, 25 RBIs, getting on base at a 407 clip and slugging 625 with a 1.032 OPS. And Julio joins only Bobby Witt Jr. as the second player in MLB history to start their career with three straight seasons going 2020, 20 home runs and 20 stolen bases. But again, too little too late. And Mariners fans, you could wave the starting rotation goodbye. There is a next to 0% chance that this same starting rotation will be there on opening day 2025. And that is because, you guessed it, the Mariners will have to figure out their payroll. At the end of the 2024 season, their total cap allocations are at 187 million. Their adjusted payroll total is just shy of 148 million. If we adjust the payroll to 2025, we can see that Julio's salary increases from $11.9 million per year to just shy of 20 million. Mitch Hanniger has a player option for $17.5 million. The Mariners have a club option on Jorge Polanco for $12 million, which I do think they should pick up. And then the big ticket items that will push the Mariners over the top are going to be figuring out the arbitration contracts. George Kirby, Cal Raleigh, and Matt Brash are all heading into their first year of arbitration. Josh Rojas was paid $3.1 million. Randy Rosarena was paid $8.1 million. Both of them are heading into their third year of arbitration. And ideally, at least one, hopefully a couple of those prior names that I mentioned, you want to lock up to a long-term contract extension, maybe buy out some of those later arbitration years. But that is also going to cost you in the short term. Otherwise, you risk the core of this franchise and this team leaving in free agency, which why would I blame them? And a guy that very well might get traded this offseason is going to be Luis Castillo. He's due $24.15 million next year, but he does have a no trade clause through the 2025 season, so he would have to agree to any trade that happens. But it is just sad that we have to deal with this. I'm frankly tired. All of you are tired. We have to deal with this year in and year out. I personally have checked out from watching Mariners games for the most part over the last month or so. Yes, looking at the stats since they hired Dan Wilson and Edgar Martinez to replace Scott Service and Jared DeHart, things have completely turned around, but still to have a 10 game divisional lead and then lose that 10 game divisional lead at a record pace is the definition of what it's like to be the Mariners. It seems the only hope that some of us have as Pacific Northwest sports fans and people that live closer to Portland is that Portland gets an expansion franchise and makes it to the World Series, potentially wins it before the Mariners even get there. I'm really curious to see what the players say, what Jerry Depoto, the front office, Dan Wilson, Edgar Martinez, all these guys say after they officially end the season. I will, of course, continue reporting on the Seattle Mariners throughout the offseason. I'm going to be making a profile on John Stanton and his ownership group. It is just enough. And we say this pretty much every year, but something has to change. But I guess at least the Seahawks are 3-0 under Mike McDonald in this new era. The Washington State Cougars are 4-0 heading into a big matchup against Boise State this weekend. It's football season. Enjoy your off seasons. Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. I'm sure this will be a great one. Feel free to rant all you like, and I'll see you in the next video.